Hi, I'm Charlie from Pro One Racing, and today I want to spend some time explaining some of the issues about metric motocross heads. In my hands, I have a CRF 250 head that I uh, soda blast cleaned, and then after we get done cleaning it for final assembly, we will use an ultrasonic cleaner. One of the biggest problems with these heads is the uh, valves going bad. And uh, on the titanium, they use a titanium valve on the intake side, and the what happens is the valve will cup in this area right here. And this is due to uh, contaminated air. It's from the heat transfer from the valve to the seat. Uh, it's also from valve, valve wash, valves to valve seat wash if they don't seal well. Uh, this is some of the problems that we have or see in, in these things. Uh, the seats in the CRF 250 and in most of your OEM motorcycle heads use a steel guide and a steel seat. The steel seat is powdered steel and one of the problems that we have is in this area they seem to etch themselves out and this is due to uh, detonation, the hardness of the seat. A powdered metal seat gets harder the more it's ran. Uh, one of the myths that people tell me about is they think that valves stretch. This is a used CRF 250 valve and as you can see it zeroes itself out. Here's a brand new Honda valve and as you can see, valve stems do not stretch on these. It's where they cup in this area on the contact of the valve seat to the valve. Here at Pro One Racing, we offer Tough Met Nickel Bronze uh, valve guides. These guides are compatible with the aftermarket uh, titanium valves. And we also offer two type seats. We have the uh, Tough Met uh, Nickel Bronze uh, seats and we also have the Moldstar 90 seats. These are a little more pricey. They're, this is what the NASCAR teams use. The nice thing about a nickel bronze seat and guide is one is we can fit the clearances to the guide the guide stem to the bore here. We can make this a lot tighter and the other thing that we can do with, with the, this type of seat it cushions the valve when the valve closes and it also dissipates the heat so that we get good heat transfer which gives us longer life. One thing that I want to make clear here though on a titanium valve application the uh, valves should be changed in about a 60 hour uh, period of time. It's just, it's, it's just good practice so we don't have that head snap off. Another thing that uh, is very important and I want to make sure that you all understand is when the valve beats itself in it changes the valve protrusion. Valve protrusion is how far the valve stem protrudes through the head. And we have a special gauge here that will give us this measurement, which is important when we do the machining work of the new valve, uh, when we do the CNC valve job on this in a little bit. Um, and this is also important when this does beat in, that uh, it also changes the valve spring pack measurement. So, uh, this is all works hand in hand. Here at Pro One Racing, we uh, I like to use OEM valves because I know they're proven. Uh, there are some aftermarket valves that are out there. They're a little bit more pricier, and that stuff it's just whatever you decide that you want to use for your application. There's also stainless steel valves that you can use, and I want you to make note that when you use stainless steel valves, you do have to change the valve springs due to the weight of the stainless steel valve versus the titanium valve. Next we're going to take the CRF 250 head and we're going to take it in the back and we're going to use the new and CNC valve seat machine to one, remove the valve seats and then second, we're going to machine high flow valve seats. This machine will machine 99 segments and have angles or radiuses to design our seats. After we've got the seats machined out, we put the head into an oven and we heat it up to 350 degrees and then we freeze the valve seats which we set at a 6,000 interference fit and we install the seats. Next we install the valve guides. We, since the head is heated up at 350 degrees the valve guides are frozen and we install the valve guides to the proper uh, height dimension. Next we hone the valve guides to get the correct valve stem to valve guide clearance. The next thing we do is we machine the valve seats paying attention to the OEM valve protrusion that is needed.